Hi, it's Leslie Denny on Leslie Denny YouTube, Leslie Denny Fitness on the YouTube channel. So welcome today. I'm really glad that you're joining us. If you've been enjoying the chair yoga for shoulders, especially from the perspective of recovery, I think you're going to like this one today. So join me, get your bottle of water and join me over onto the chair. I'm using one of my fold-up chairs. I'm in my little internal office today because it's just been a little easier to translate the video directly to the YouTube channel. And I'm, I have wood floors, but I've got a carpet here to make sure that it doesn't slide around, and that's really important for you to do. Then we're going to use a strap today. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. It has to be at least six feet long. That's a good, comfortable length of strap. So you could use a cotton belt. You could, I've, I've had some yoga students use the tie. Who wears a tie, right? But um, use a tie occasionally as a strap. So anything like that will work. And then I'm using a block to support my feet today. You don't have to use the block, but it really is helpful and for the feet to support them and today we're going to be incorporating that block to utilize a little abdominal strengthening. Abdominals you say, but I thought we were working on our shoulders. Well we are working on the shoulders, but that doesn't mean that the rest of your body doesn't need to be stronger to be able to support that. So this has been stair-stepping up. The first one was a really basic one, the second one had a little bit more to it, and this one is going to be 45 minutes long. It's still not a full 60 minutes because we're going to incorporate a lot more stuff today. We're going to be coming out of the chair. We're going to be trying to move into downward facing dog. We're going to have more stretches. We're just going to be doing the abdominal strengtheners. So we've got quite a few things that we're going to be covering today. And what you're constantly concerned with is do you feel any pain at any time? If you do, stop altogether and consult your healthcare provider to make sure that you're both on the same page. And if you haven't consulted them, then please do so. Because remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a yoga teacher, for gosh sakes. So I can only guide you through some rehab work that might be useful to you. But you and your physician, physical therapist, um, naturopath, or whoever it is that you work with, are the ones that actually are going to be the ones that guide you through all of this to make sure that you're safe and sound. Um, so today we're just going to go ahead and plop our feet up on that block if you'd like to use that. And if you don't have a block, search around your house for a really thick book. Uh, War and Peace by Tolstoy is about the size of a, a yoga block. Uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows is actually the exact size of a yoga block. So you've got a, probably a lot of choices around your house that you can use where you don't have to feel like, oh, I can't do my yoga. So as you come into this comfortable seated posture and that emphasis on the word comfortable, play a little music if you'd like, set the environment, maybe diffuse a little oil or play something on that you can inhale periodically and just get nice and comfortable and rest your full body weight back into the chair and just close your eyes and then begin to feel your breath just the way it is right now. And then when you're comfortable to do so, begin to breathe just a little deeper. And in that space where you're really connecting with your breath, just maybe repeat an intention. The intention sets the pace for the practice. So allow it to be something that's meaningful to you.
And when you're ready, on the inhale, lift the chest, extend through the spine, exhale, round the back, moving into that flexion. And however far you extend the spine around the back is entirely up to you. We're going to be doing quite a few different movements to get you warmed up today for this particular practice. This is chair yoga for shoulders number three. And then come to a little bit more an upright seated posture. And if you're more comfortable still leaning back into the chair, feel free to do that. We're going to drop one shoulder towards the opposite knee and then lift it up and out. We've done this. And then when you're using and connecting with your breath, exhale on that forward, kind of very slight rotational bend. Inhale to open the chest. Good. And now we're going to incorporate a rotation. So just roll that body forward and around. And again, today we're going to be working a little bit more on the abdominals. Um, Concert a lot of effort on that because strong abdominals help support the rest of your body. It's almost like that is that's a remembered muscle group from the appearance standpoint, but from a functional standpoint, strong core is really critical to supporting your overall body integrity. And then rotate it in the opposite direction. And it's just rolling it forward around and back and minimize anything that you need to. And then come to that upright seated posture. Drawing the arms out in front of you. Inhale, open up through the chest. Exhale, bring it forward. Remember, we talked about this in session two, that you want to be careful not to lift the elbows and the arms up above that shoulder height. This can be a lot of tension for the back of the neck. So keep it into a neutral place where you can move comfortably without struggling. Inhaling to open. Exhale to close. And you're watching out for any discomfort, minimizing or maybe modifying whatever you need to. Or for gosh sakes, go ahead and just stop the practice if you need to. Maybe sometimes watching it through one time is really a helpful practice. And one more time. So you should start to feel a little bit of fatigue from this movement. And then drop the hands to the lap. Inhaling, reach one arm up and over. Remember this one we talked about not rotating the torso, but keeping into that lateral side body stretch, not necessarily caving into that opposite side, but just really lengthening up through that side body. And then release the hand down and sweep that opposite arm up and over and just see what your range is. I can lift it up over this high. You may not get beyond here. It's different for everybody. 
So just follow your inner guide and do what feels good. And then release that arm down. Good. On the inhale, reach the arms up. Go as high as you can. On the exhale, release into forward fold. Inhale to flat back. Exhaling forward fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhaling, hands at heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms up. I can't see my arms. They're there. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhaling, forward fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhaling, hands at heart. Inhaling, sweep up. Exhale to your forward fold. Inhale to flat back. Exhaling, forward fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhaling, hands at heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhaling, forward fold. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Draw the elbows to touch best you can. Then slowly lift. As soon as those elbows want to pull apart, open them up and around. So breath connection is inhale here, exhale, sweeping them around and down. And do that three more times. And one more time here. Good. And drop the hands towards the lap again and drop that left shoulder towards the right knee and just stretch into it. We're not opening up the opposite shoulder really, so I'm not turning like so. I'm just stretching the top of that shoulder towards that knee. And then lifting up, roll it to the opposite side. And then we're going to start on our abdominal work a little bit. And then lift it up and release. So using your block if you need to, um, we're going to do this two different times throughout our practice today. The first time is without anything in between the knees, but we are going to be placing that block between the knees to work the pelvic floor muscles. So you can just rest your feet on the block or on the floor, whichever is more comfortable for you. Inhaling, extend out through that left leg, exhale, bring it back down. Inhale to the right and exhale, bring it back down. So you're going to notice a couple of things. Um, the first thing is, is you're probably, if you really get the leg extended all the way, you're going to feel that quadricep group pop quite a bit. So what you want to do is really engage by pulling up and in through the pelvic floor and kind of pulling the rib cage in as you extend that leg out and then just relaxing it as you drop the foot back down with the mat. That's great. Keep doing that from side to side. This is just like a starter for us. And for some folks, you may be doing this and say, ah, you know, I can do that. But for a lot of folks, they can't. So remember, we're gradually building strength in all areas of the body as we do this. And then just keep extending and draw it back down. I know you can see the bottoms of my feet. I washed my feet for you today, just for you. Good. You're going to do four more to each side unless you say, I don't want to do four more to each side. Then in that case, just stop. Really engage as you extend that leg out. Relax as you bring it back. Engage as you extend. Relax as you bring it back. Good. Two more at each side.
Good. And then check in. Just take a breath and check in a little bit. So the reason we did that early on is because it warmed your body up. And what we're going to be doing is going into one of our first pretty big stretches using the strap. We're going to grab that strap and bring it around behind your chair. Hence why you want six feet in length. Because for some of us, depending on where those shoulders are at, you need to take the hands wider apart to be able to go into this formation of chest expansion. For others, if you're comfortable taking those hands closer together, then feel free to do that. But I'm going to turn to my side to tell you what the watch out is. If you bring the hands so close that when you lift the arms, they're not going that high, and what's actually happening is you're bringing the chin forward to accommodate it, that's not good. What you want to do is take the hands wider apart and then carefully lift those arms and notice that the back of my neck and my head is really in what we call neutral position. The chin isn't coming forward, it's just staying nice and neutral. So you can keep your feet on the block if you like. Remember, you're using that for your own comfort at this point. And draw the arms behind you. You can rest all the way back into the chair if that's better for you. Take the hands to a comfortable distance apart, and the grip is the tops of your arms are facing forward, and you're basically gripping it like so. So your fingers are wrapping around to the back onto the strap like so. And then hold on to it and just slowly start to lift those arms up and stop when you feel you need to. And just take a couple of deep breaths. Good. Now from there, if you think it's comfortable to do so and safe for you to do, see if you can walk the hands a little closer together. If you can't, don't do it. Just hold strong wherever you are and make sure that the choices that you're making are working for you and not working against you. Good. And then release from there. And rest your strap across your lap. And now we're going to move into eagle arms. So stacking that left elbow on top of right, you're going to intertwine those arms and then bring the elbows. Last week we didn't do this portion, but bring the elbows away from the body as much as you're able to. Last week we stayed very close in. You can still stay there if you like, but if you're comfortable, stretch those elbows out and then slowly lift them up to the point of a gentle resistance stretch through that upper back. I'd like to do a lot of side stuff just so you can see what's going on. Feel like you're breathing into your upper back. And then release and grab that strap again behind you. And this time either stay back to the chair or you may decide that you want to come away from the chair a little bit and slowly lift those arms up just to the point of gentle resistance, not force. Should feel a big contraction into the upper back muscles and a stretch across the front of the chest. Let's take three more breaths here, less if you need to draw out sooner. Good, and then release from there and go ahead and drop that strap across your, chest, your lap again. And now we're gonna stack that, I think we did the, the le left elbow on top of right, intertwine and lift, I just forgot. So the right elbow on top of left. Draw the elbows away and lift just to the best of your ability and comfort and safety. Always remember, you're in control of this class, and if you feel like you need to minimize certain things or drop them out altogether, that's your call. Good, and then release from there, shoulder circles up and around. Now do a little check-in. 
we're going to drop little check-ins in here and see how you're feeling. Do you feel just a little sore, a little stretched, or do you feel pain? Do you feel discomfort? If you do, drop out. If you're feeling you know, good so far, and you, you feel like you could go a little bit more, then hold it with me here. Dropping your strap to the side, we're going to go ahead and scoot it forward, and now we're going to incorporate a little bit more abdominals. This is the second component, but this time we're going to drop that block between the knees. Do you need to do that? Nah. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Oh no, we've got a guest appearance with Merlin. So anchor your feet through the floor, and thank you, bud. Boy, that was, that was encouraging. And then extend out through that left leg and drop back down. Now I'm doing two things this time. I'm not only just using the block, I'm sitting away from the back of the chair. And as I begin to extend those legs, I can feel I really have to engage through my abdominal muscles even more so than I did that first time. So what does that mean? It means that if you want to dial down a little bit and actually kind of move back to the back part of your chair or make any other modifications or just delete this segment altogether, you're welcome to do that. So just keep extending and lowering, really engaging through the abdominals. I'll let you in on a little secret. I haven't done this for a while, so I'm feeling it. And it feels, for me, it feels really good. Two more each side, less if you choose. Good. And then one more and then release from there. So you can keep your block to the side if you like, because what we're going to do is we're going to go into that warrior two. We did this one, a portion of it last time. So let's go ahead and step the right foot out and then draw the arms out from the shoulders. So this time we're going to inhale to reach the arms up, exhale to draw them out to the shoulders. Oh, that's not good. Remember, that's the golden rule. I'll say it a million times that you don't have to do anything that's not comfortable for you, or especially if it's painful. You will not, there's, there's this old concept of when we do something that is so hard to do that we're forcing it to happen, it never stays. It, it just doesn't. The things that we do, great acts of love, little shifts at a time, those are the things that last. So make sure that your practice is really reflective of that. And just one more. Good. Now we're going to rest that right elbow towards the right thigh. And what I want you to think of is not collapsing into it so that you're drawing the shoulder up towards your ear. You're actually sitting away from it and, and grazing very little weight onto that forearm so you're using your abdominals to support yourself. And then with the next breath, reach that opposite arm up as high as you're able to go and then create little circles, just small circles. And then reverse the circling motion to the other direction. Good. And then release from there and bring it back to center. Now with that arm that was raised, that left arm, hinge forward and just let it dangle. Let it dangle. That has a tendency to release so much tension throughout the shoulders, especially if you're recovering from a shoulder issue. It can feel really good. Good. Then bring it back up. Stepping that left foot out, drawing the arms out from the shoulders. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bring them back out. Four more times if you're comfortable with that. And one more time here. And then just rest that left forearm to the thigh. Remember, we're not collapsing into it. We're just grazing it, really opening up and then reaching that opposite arm up and circling it around, small circles. 
So I don't know if I mentioned this the last time, but it's become a big joke around the house. We rebuilt my office and um, just made it just for me, changed the direction, circle it around, brought in a new little comfortable chair to sit in, set up my craft area because I do a lot of crafts for donation and things like that. And we called it the she shed, which I guess is a term that a lot of people use. And then release from there and then come back to center. You're gonna take a deep inhale, reach the arms up, exhale into forward fold, inhale to flat back, and exhale to forward fold. Inhaling, reach up, and exhaling, hands to heart center. Grab your block, we're gonna go into a third series of abdominals. I didn't tell you that, did I? No, poor baby. We're just gonna go and scoot it forward and then extend out through one leg, bring it back, and alternate from side to side. Well, Merlin, my cat, decided that he really likes the she shed, and all of a sudden he's spending way too much time in here, so we had to rename it the We Shed. Every time I open that door, he's in here, just like this is my space. Good. I'm gonna do two more to each side. And I also remember, if you're starting to feel that fatigue, don't push yourself. Just do what you can do. Good, and then release from there. So dropping the block down to the mat, let's take the edges of your feet right to the edge of the block. Um, you can't see me very well, but what I'm gonna do is turn to the side because maybe that'll be a little easier. Yeah, so what I've done is I'm placing the edges like the balls of my feet right there and I'm dropping the heels down. So what I'm doing in essence is getting a calf stretch but it's gonna open up space for me to hinge forward with a long flat back. And what we're gonna do is reach those arms out and draw those elbows down and back towards each other. Really engage that abdominal network as you're doing this. And then do it maybe three or four times, you know, just whatever feels good to you. In much of this practice, um, Always feel free that if there's a certain component that you're doing that you'd like to do longer, just pause the video and just keep doing it and then bring it back up again. So in this four series, inhaling to reach, exhale to bring it back. And what you're really looking out for right now is not only comfort throughout the shoulder range, but you're really looking to make sure that you don't feel tension in your low back. That's where those abdominals come in. Good. And then release from there. You're going to go ahead and circle that upper body around again. And this is kind of a nice thing to do because what it does is it stretches through the lower um, back muscles like the latissimus dorsi. And it can even help get into the QL muscles of quadratus lumborum that can create a lot of tension through the shoulder range. Good. And then change the direction. And then we're going to come to a standing posture today. Remember, if you're like, I don't, I don't think I want to do that, you don't have to. Good. Now, when we get up, you want to make sure that anything that can possibly get your attention on your feet and <laughs> make you trip is moved to the side. So I'm going to pick up my block and my strap, and I'm going to put those out to the side so that they will provide no interference. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my hands on the chair and I'm going to keep one hand on the chair as I'm coming around to the back of the chair. So as you push up, engage that core and then just make sure that your hand is on the chair back as you're coming around to the side. Now I'm going to lean forward because I know that I'm cutting out a frame right here. But if you're standing up straight, what I want you to do is hinge forward and drop those hands down towards the chair seat and now I'm going to turn to the side again and then just walk those feet back into a downward facing dog. You want to try to emulate Adho Mukha Shavasana by pushing that chair seat away from you and bringing that back into that lengthened standpoint so that there's less load on the shoulders here 
and actually more stretch through the legs. And then from there, you can walk those feet back a little bit more, but make sure that you're in a stable position. If, you, if that chair is not on a grippy surface, it will slip. So you need to investigate those things. Make sure that you're safe. Good. Then just step the left foot forward and we're moving into a pyramid pose. That is such a great stretch. And you may be again wondering, well, wait a minute, we're working on shoulders. So why are we doing a pyramid stretch? Well, when you loosen up musculature in other parts of the body, it frees up the other end. So as you're doing hip stretches and whatnot, it's going to open up the upper body to have more room to move. You want to try to check in here in this moment and make sure that you're not feeling any shoulder fatigue or pain. Let's take one more breath here. Good. And then bend through that front knee. We're rising up into a warrior one. You're just going to roll yourself up like so. I know I've dropped out of frame. But I want you to take the left arm, same arm on the foot that's back, and open up through that chest. It's like the headless yoga instructor. And then release back into your pyramid pose, stepping that left foot back, move right back into your downward facing dog and take a breath. You're going to feel more flexibility of that heel reaching towards the mat more so than the other because you just opened up some other stretches. Then step that right foot forward, move right into that pyramid stretch, always remembering that one side is going to feel a little more uncomfortable than the other. And then as you rise up, bending through that front knee and moving into that Warrior one, where you're reaching that right arm back and opening up through the shoulder. And then release back to your downward facing dog. Carefully drop the hands to the mat, stretch it out, and then step it forward. Round the back, roll it up, and then come back to your seat. So make sure the hand is on the chair as you're coming back around and dropping it down. So from a cardiovascular standpoint, one of the best things that you can do is just continually and repetitively stand up from the chair and sit back down. I am not kidding. So if you feel like you're restricted from trying to do a little cardiovascular activity, again, consult your healthcare provider. But remember that Jack LaLanne did this to a radio announcer one time who said he had no time to work out. He just said, well, then get up and get back down. And he did it like 20 times. And, and the kid who was about 20 years old said, I'm completely out of breath. So that is a great way to do it, but just make sure you're carefully lifting up, using the strength of your core, and then lowering back down slowly and not just propelling yourself back into the chair. So that's a little tip of the day if you want to work on a little bit of cardiovascular activity. So let's do a couple of stretches because we're almost at the end of our practice today. It goes by that fast. The first thing that we're going to do is work on the hip stretch. And I'm using my block. And this is what I talked about last week, was that you could cross the foot over to rest onto the edge of a block if you're not comfortable going here. This is just a beautiful stretch for the hips that opens up the upper body. So just lean into it to that long, flat back and just take a few breaths. Boy, that feels really good. Good. Let's release from there and switch it to the other side. And remember, use the block option if you like. And just lean into it with that flat back. Good. 
and then we'll lace the foot down. Draw the chin to your chest and then roll that left ear towards the left shoulder and stretch that right arm out. This is a really wonderful way to create space, not only throughout the shoulder, but opening up through the trapezius muscle right up here. Levator scapula. And then rest the hand back to the lap, chin to chest, roll it to the other side and reach and then stretch that left arm out. Then bringing the chin to the chest, just gently lift the head up. We're gonna move right into that stretch that we've done a couple of times now. You're gonna rest that left hand towards the right upper quadrant of your chest. Push and pull down, then bring the chin up, and you're immediately feeling that throat stretch, and then just push the chin out and guide the head over to that left direction. This is really so wonderful. and then release it, and then switch it to the other side. Push, pull down, lift the chin up, and then guide it over to the other direction. And then gently release from there. Okay. Shoulder circles up and around. And let's check range of motion. With the inhale, sweep the arms up. And draw the elbows out to the side, just to the height that feels good to you. And then as you turn the head to look towards that right hand, bring that opposite elbow out. So I'm just pulling that left elbow out and back. And then slowly turn the head facing forward and then turn it to the opposite direction towards that left hand and then bring that right elbow back. And then turning the face forward, drop the arms, lean forward, and then just circle that right arm. We didn't do that arm earlier when we finished up our Warrior Two um, sequence. Okay. And then lift it up and inhale, open those arms out. Exhale, sweep it forward. Inhale, open up, and exhale, sweep it forward. And one more. Good. Now the last thing that we're going to be doing is kind of a the the upper portion of the Gomukhasana position, the upper arms. So you may want to grab your strap, and also if your feet need a support, it's a good time to just go ahead and pop your feet back on the block. Some, block. Sometimes that really helps relax the hip flexors in in this area of the hips. So I'm going to grab that strap with my left hand and take it right behind my head. And then I'm bringing the right hand behind me to grab that stretch. 
strap and I'm joining the hands a little, uh, just as close together as I can, so long as I'm not bringing the chin forward or dropping the chin down to my chest. I'm gonna keep that chin lifted up. And then from here, if you're feeling a good stretch throughout the trap, the tricep muscles on that left arm and through the shoulder on the right arm, then just hold it there. If you feel comfortable leaning forward into the position just a little bit, feel free to do that, but don't feel like you have to. And let's just take a couple of deep breaths. And then gently release from there and we'll switch it off to the other side. Bring that arm up and around, grab the tail of that strap just to wherever you're comfortable. Both sides will not always be the same. And hold there, making any other adjustments that you need to, just so long as you feel comfortable, safe and sound. And take about five deep breaths. and then release from there. Go ahead and pop that strap to the side and just relax yourself back into your seat. And close your eyes. And just check in to the good work that you've done today. Let's take a few breaths and when it's time to come back, I'll come for you. Take a deep breath. Just check in and see how you're feeling. Hopefully you feel comfortable, feel a little stretched. You might have a little muscular soreness, but no pain. So thank you 
for joining me today for our chair for shoulders uh, session three. The next session that we'll be doing will be a 60 minute session. It will incorporate a, much of the same postures that you experienced here, but it really is the gateway to move into the other chair yoga classes that are out there. So if you're following this series, be sure to join us for the next session that's going to be coming out, which will be number four. And uh, that one will also be incorporating using the strap and the block. And in the meantime, just kind of take some time to celebrate what you accomplished today. Thanks for joining me. I'm so grateful, and I hope that you have a fabulous day.